meeting sa, sa mga nasa Zoom at sa nasa Facebook. Maganda umaga po sa inyong lahat. This morning, we'll be talking about the title of the message is Believing Loyalty. We're going to study the word hesed in Hebrew. This word he said is uh, mentioned in Psalm, Psalm 36 verse 7. Ang sabi ron, how precious is your steadfast love. The word steadfast love there is he said. O God, the children of mankind take refuge in the shadow of your wings. One of the most important Hebrew words is very familiar to Christians is he said. It is usually translated loving kindness or steadfast love in the English Bible, okay? The word he said occurs around 250 times in the Old Testament. More than half of those are mentioned in the book of Psalms. And we know the book of Psalms is about human thankfulness and praise of God's he said. Okay. Remember in Psalm 23 verse 6, surely goodness and mercy, the word mercy there, the original word is he said, shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Hebrew word he said also is spelled, she said, has no English or Greek equivalent. Wala po siyang exactong uh, English equivalent. It is born from a root word nang ibig sabihin is to bow one's head toward another and signifies a covenant relationship. Bowing one head is most likely, pinakamalapit na word is loyalty. Okay? Bible versions translated, he said, with many different words such as love, goodness, kindness, mercy, devo devotions, and favor. And many scholars feel believing loyalty or loving loyalty represent, he said, best. Okay? So this morning, we're going to use the word believing loyalty or loving loyalty to represent the word he said. He said also reflects God's character. And believing loyalty is actually, or the word he said, is how we relate to God and also to Christ. So yun din ang ibig sabihin no he said or believing loyalty this is how we relate to God and how do we relate to Christ in the New Testament. We believe that we need to be loyal to what we believe. That's what it means by believing loyalty. We need to be loyal to what we believe. God's he said is rooted also in love, not human merit or performance. So, dalawang klase po ito. Yung he said, this is the response of God to us, and our response to God is also called he said. So, we believe and we express loving loyalty and believing loyalty. So when we get born again, di ba? ang requirement is what? We believe in our hearts. So we need to be loyal to what we believe. At ano ba yung ating paniniwalaan? We need to be loyal to the Savior in whom we believe. So ang hinihintay sa atin ni Lord ay yung ating loyalty sa Kanya. So he said, the word he said describes an emotion 
and this is linked to salvation, it is also bind the relationship between people and covenants with God. So the word he said, did you describe nito, yung expression of our emotions sa ating kapwa-tao, pakikipagrelasyon natin sa tao, at sa ating pakikipag-covenant o pakikipag-kontrata sa ating Panginoong Diyos. Si Karaya, speak of relationship with one another. The word he said is also talking about our relationship with one another. Hexekariah 7, verses 9 to 10. That says the Lord of us, render true judgment, show kindness, or he said, and mercy to one another. Do not oppress the widow, the fatherless, the sojourner of the poor, and let none of you devise evil against another in your heart. So, ang salitang he said ay hindi lang ito patungkol sa response ng Diyos sa atin kung hindi yung ating response sa kapwa-tao o yung ating pakikipagkapwa-tao. Okay? So the word he said is mentioned and it has something to do with our covenant with God. Example, Kinawag niya si Abraham at si Sarah at binigyan niya ng anak. At sa pamagitan ng anak, mapufulfill ang promise niya that he will become the father of many nations. And through him, many nations will be blessed. Okay? So God actually is showing loyalty to his original plan. Because remember, God has no other plan. There is only one plan, plan A. What is that plan A? To have a human family. For him to be their God and for humans to be his people. Yan ang nakapaloob sa covenant. Katandaan po natin ang covenant ay merong tinatawag na stronger party and the weaker party. Ang Diyos ang stronger party, tayo ang weaker party. Kapag nag-covenant itong dalawang ito, Ang ibig sabihin ay ganito. Yung stronger party, siya ang bahala sa weaker party. Ibig sabihin ng bahala, siya ang magpo-provide ng lahat ng kailangan ng weaker party. Because he is what? The stronger party. That's why when he said, I will be your God and you will be my people. But it is not to everybody. Tandaan niyo po, panahon ng Genesis chapter 10, nagkaroon po ng kakaibang pangyayari. The 70 nation that was mentioned in uh, Genesis chapter 10, 70 nation, he divorced him. He divorced these 70 nations. And that is what we call the Deuteronomy 32 worldview. He divorced these 70 nations and then what happens is he places sons of God to rule over them. At pagdating ng Genesis chapter 12, anong ginawa niya? He chooses the nation of Israel, actually Abraham. He called Abraham from Ur para maging ano niya? Nations. So out of Abraham, he will create a new family because these 70 nations rejected him. He rejected him. So they built, instead of spreading out, diba yun ang kumanya, multiply and replenish the earth, they just come together in one place in Babel and build a tower. So God said, oh, sige, if you don't like me, I will divorce you. So he placed sons of God to rule over them. That's why he divided the nations. And every nation ay meron siyang inilagay na mga rulers, or we call it the sons of God, that eventually becomes a fallen sons of God. That's why pagdating sa Genesis, Psalm chapter 82, you can read there, God is in a court judging these sons of God who did a lousy job. Okay? So that is what we call Deuteronomy 32 worldview. That is the third rebellion. The first rebellion is Adam and Eve disobey God, 
The second rebellion is Genesis chapter 6 when the son, the fallen sons of God marry the daughters of men at nag-create sila ng mga nipilims. Nag-create sila ng sarili ng sin. That's why sumama ang mga tao. That's why God ginunaw niya ang mga ang mundo. Tama? Nagkaroon ng flood. And then after the flood, there were 70 nations out of Noah, but they still rejected God. So sabi ni Lord, so si, ayoko na rin sa inyo. I will put sons of God to rule over you. Okay? But the sons of God, instead of doing justice to the people, they take advantage of the people. They receive the worship of the people. So God chooses Abraham and he started a new family. Okay? So he is showing his head to or he is expressing his loving loyalty to having human as a family. So every time na nabanggit yung salitang, he said, or loving kindness or steadfast love, he's saying that I am loyal to what I have promised to you. So he's going to use the family of Abraham to, be, to bring others back in, the 70 nations. Okay? Di ba sabi ng Diyos that through you, di ba? Many nations, other nations will be blessed. So these are the nations who were disinherited and he wants it to be back into his family. At ang gagamitin niya ay ang ano, pamilya ni Abraham. So when God shows his he said, actually, it is he's showing it through covenant. He's saying that I will be faithful to my covenant. That I will be loyal to my covenant to you. It's through a covenant relationship. It's an exclusive relationship. Tandaan niyo po yan. Nung kayo na born again, you had what we call exclusive relationship with God. And this relationship is not given to all. Only those who respond. Only those who believe. Remember, God comes to Abraham, not the other way around. It was not Abraham who comes to God, but God comes to Abraham. Abraham doesn't invite him. Diba? God chooses Abraham and he makes promises to Abraham. As ang sabi ni Lord, I will be loyal to my promises to you. So that is, he said, believing loyalty. So God shows his loyalty to humanity through not giving up on a plan A. Remember, God has a plan. He wants human to live here on earth. Kaya pagdating sa revelations, there will be new heaven and new earth. Nakuha niyo po? God still wants us to rule the earth. Kaya pagdating sa Genesis chapter 3, there was interruptions, di ba? Nagkaasala ang tao. But immediately, God has initiated the plan. And the plan A. There is no plan B. It's only plan A. And He is committed and He is loyal to that promises na Kanyang tutuparin ang Kanyang ipinangako. So he enters into a covenantal relationship with this one people, the family of Abraham na tinawag na ngayon na ano, Israel. At ang lahat ng naborn again, we become part of what? Israel. We become spiritual Israel. Diba? Those who believe in Christ, we become what? Join ears with Christ at kasama tayong tagapagmana. Nung lahat ng sinabi ni Lord, Kay Abraham, ipinangako kay Abraham, kasama din po tayo doon. Tandaan niyo po, si Abraham may dalawang klaseng sin. Di ba sabi niya, look at the sun in the seashore. Yung sun na yun, kung gano'ng innumerable, ganyan ang magiging mong lahi. And look at the stars. At kung gano'ng karami yan, ganyan din ang magiging lahi mo. So there is a natural Israel 
and there is what we call the spiritual Israel. Even those people don't just automatically get the benefit of these promises unless you made covenant with God. And the requirement is they must be they must believe and they must be loyal to God. They must have believing loyalty toward Yahweh of Israel. They can just intellectually believe and then live any way they want or worship any God they want. So long time na born again, we made a covenant with God. And what he is expecting from us is what? A believing loyalty. Not just an intellectual believing. Na alam mo na, oh, na born again ako. No. We don't do things and then God owes us something. Para bang, o oh, sige ito, gagawin kito sa para sa Panginoon. At ang feeling natin, ang Diyos ay may utang sa'yo. O ang Diyos ay ano, ay uh, may utang na loob sa'yo. Di ba? Hindi po ganun ang believing loyalty. So you don't you don't put God in your debt or God is never in our debt because we believe we are going to be loyal to God. Yun ang ibig sabihin ng said. We need to be what? Loyal to God. That's the way we show our love to God. He said, believing loyalty. So we're loyal to his plan of salvation shown to us through the Lord Jesus Christ. So they have to believe that Yahweh is God of all gods. And only he can give them everlasting life and only he is the way to salvation and forgiveness of sin. Yun yung hinahanap sa atin ni Lord. Believing loyalty. Kinakalang paniwalaan natin na siya lang ang makapagbibigay ng buhay ng walang hanggan. At yung buhay natin dito sa lupa, sa kanya lang. Di ba? Wala nang iba. But the problem is, that is what we are missing. Yung believing loyalty. They have to believe all these things, just like Christians have to believe in Christ. They have to believe all things. In the Old Testament, people just believe all things that si Lord lang ang pwede mag-provide sa kanila. And if they believe, they will not go up and worship or believe in some other God or no God at all or to make themselves God. Pag sinabi mong you have a believing loyalty, to the Lord Jesus Christ or to God, you will not worship other God. Nakuha niyo pa. Or you will never trust even in yourself. Di ba sabi niya, seek you first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, all these things shall be added unto you. Most of us, we are making ourselves God. We are trusting in our own human determination. We thought we can make it through our own strength. Hindi ho. The law is good, but loyalty to it without embracing, Je embracing Jesus as Messiah or without belief, it doesn't save. Romans 10, diba? If you confess that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart. Remember, there is what you call circumcision in the Old Testament. Every male is circumcised. The cutting of the for skin of a male organ na sinasabi ng tatay, lahat ng aking seed, lahat ng aking anak, what happened? They will what? They will be loyal 
to my God. He dedicated his sin. In the New Testament, there is no more cutting of the flesh, but the circumcision of the, the heart. Okay? They obey the Torah, remember. The Old Testament people, they obey the Torah. Not to go to heaven, but to show their loving loyalty to God. Why they follow the law to the letter? Because they want to show their loving loyalty or believing loyalty to their God. So when he said is attributed to God, it concerned the realization of the promises essential in the covenant. So when God said, he said, or loving kindness or loving loyalty, He's, he means he is committed na lahat ang ipinangako niya doon sa covenant, tutuparin niya. Yun ang ibig niyang sabihin. In other words, God is expressing his said towards you or towards his people in relation to the promises that, is, that he has made covenantally with humanity. Everything that he has promised, he is what? Bound to fulfill it. That's why they call it he said. He has what? Loyal siya sa kanyang ipinangako sa atin. And one of the problem ng human is what? Nakakalimutan nila ang Diyos na ang Diyos ay parang tinitreat nila na tao na nakalimot sa kanyang covenant. Hindi ho. God is God. And He is faithful to what he has promised and he's going to fulfill. Sabi niya, heaven and earth will pass away, but his word will never pass away. He came, sabi pa nga niya, to fulfill the word. And Jeremiah 1.12 says, he is watching his word to fulfill it. So now humans still have to choose to participate in the covenant. Kaya ang inaasahan sa atin ng Diyos ay yung ding tinatawag na He said that we need to have this kind of loyalty or believing loyalty to Him. So the covenant language is repeated in the passage and linked always to the Abraham obedience. Tinan niyo po. When Abraham obeys, Actually, he's not earning his salvation. He is what? Expressing his loyalty. He's obeying because he believes in the God who promised him the terms of the covenant. Sabi niya, I will be your God and you will be my people. <clears throat> Ibig sabihin ng Panginoon, I am the stronger party in the covenant. Ako ang bahala sa iyo. Lahat ng kailangan mo, lahat ng proteksyon, ako ang magpuprovide lahat. And your response to him is what? Sabi niya, you will be my people. Ibig sabihin, he expecting you to participate in the covenant that he made with you. So in Genesis 22, remember, the sacrifice of Isaac, Abraham actually is showing that he wants those things God has promised. He is willing to sacrifice his own son. And he believed that God can raise his son from the dead. Pansinin mo, hindi niya sinabi kay Sarah na i-offer niya yung kanyang anak. Alam niya, magkakagulo, magahalo ang balat sa tinalupan. Baka sabihin ni Sarah, ah, bago mo gawin yan, ikaw muna ang papatayin ko. <laughs> 25 years kung hinintay ang bata na yan, ah, ngayon 15 years na siya, o bali 40 years, and then papatayin lang. Oh. But why Abraham did this thing? He is showing that he wants those things God has promised. I want to participate, yun yung sinasabi niya. He wants to be a recipient. He wants to be a supporter, a participant in the covenant. Hindi po pwedeng one-sided ang covenant, mga kapatid. 
we have to participate in the covenant. He believes that God will deliver on what he has promised. That's why when he asked God, when God asked him about the son, sacrificing it to him, hindi siya ng dalawang isip. He obeys God. Di ba? And because he believed, he does what God asked. Yung believed doon ni Abraham, he was considered what? Because of that, he, was, he become righteous. Not because of what he has done, but because of his belief. He said, it's not there for grace. It's not the same as grace. Nakawa niyo po. He said also, it's not love. But he said, it's motivated by love. So it is not a synonym for love. Di ba nabanggit ko nina? Walang exact translation ito. Hebrew to Greek or to English. Theologically, all people can expect God to love them. Because sabi ng uh, John 3.16, for God so loved the world. Di ba? God loves people. But those who reject God's love, actually, they are not recipients of His said. The recipients of His said are only those who loves God, who received the love of God and accepted the love of God. So you have to choose to believe. You have to choose to be a participant in a covenant relationship. It's always a two-way. Naalala niyo po? It always takes two to tango. Hindi ka pwede magtango na nag-iisa. You need the participants. You need to participate in the covenant. And believing that God who made the covenant can deliver on these promises and no one can. And no one else can. Yan ang pinakamahalaga. That is believing loyalty. You express you're loyal to God at walang ibang pwede mag-deliver ng pangako niya kundi isa lamang. So he wants you to believe that he is who He is and He can deliver what He says. Yun po ang mahalaga. Sandali lang po. I-check ko lang ito. So he wants you to believe that he is who he is and he can deliver what he says. Yan ang believing loyalty. Yan ang hinahanap sa atin ni Lord. The first thing that God wants is our works be done from a believing heart or from a circumcised heart. Because if we do something for the Lord out of unbelief, it has wala ho itong merit. Nakuha niyo po. It must come from what? A believing heart. So anything we do outside a believing is like putting the cart before the horse. Hindi na andar. Pag nasa unahan yung cart, yung kabayo mo nasa ulihan. Oh. This word, this verse has been repeated many times in the Old Testament, especially in the book of Psalms. For he is good and his kindness, he said, endures forever. Di ba? Madalas natin makita yan. Mabasa. Uh, for he is good and his, he said, endures forever. It's a praise that occurs a lot of times in the Old Testament. So it is part of God's nature to be loyal 
to the people that he loved. And he decided to be in covenant relation with, relationship with him. Nature po ng Diyos ang maging loyal. Nakuha niyo po. And he, whatever he promised, kanyang tutuparin. Di ba sabi ni Lord? He came to give us life and make it more abundant. You just need to believe His promise. Natutuparin niya yan. Abundant life. Hindi lang doon sa langit, even here on earth. Pasasaganain ka. Para ranas sa'yo ang buhay na masagana. Even though God doesn't enter into covenants directly with all the nations. When He makes covenant with Abraham, He tells Abraham in John 17, You are going to be the father of many nations. So, kasama sila. That's why, sabi ng Bible, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and your household will be saved because of your faith and belief in our Lord Jesus Christ. Kasamang ibibless din ni Lord ang lahat ng miyembro ng pamilya mo. Abraham becomes a tool in God's hand to complete a greater thing than just this one family. Individually, When, he, when you made a covenant with God, hindi lang ikaw ang ibibless ni Lord, including your family members, kasama sila. Even when God doesn't directly extend His said to people outside Abraham, He still loves them and He still make a way for them to be participants. Katulad sa atin. We don't belong to the tribe of Israel. Di ba? We don't belong to the chosen people of God. But because he loves all humans and he invites everybody to be part of this covenant. So when we enter into God's covenant, we become participants. We experience his, his said to us, his loyalty to us. Tinan niyo po. And the word of the Lord came to Zechariah saying, Thus says the Lord of us, render true judgment, show kindness and mercy to one another. So he has, Micah 6.8, a very common, he has told you, O oh man, what is good and what the Lord requires of you, but to do justice, to love kindness. The word kindness there is what? He said, and to walk humbly with your God. So this is how God wants to treat humanity. He said, loyal. It is how humans should treat each other, especially within the family of God. So ibig sabihin, you have to be loyal with people. Right? So he said, ang ating basis ng ating pakikipagrelasyon sa kapwa-tao. He said it's also part of our character in the way we treat fellow believers or the way we treat people and the way we respond to God. So he said is the way we respond to people and the way we respond to God. Loyalty. He said does not refer to a spontaneous or unmotivated kindness. It relates to a mode of behavior that arises from a relationship defined by rights and obligations. When you have covenant with your kapwa-tao or fellow believers in the Lord, you express loyalty, not because gusto mo lang or natripan mo lang na madal mabait siya, papakitaan mo siya ng kabaitan. No. It is what? By rights and obligation. You are obligated to show that kahit hindi pa siya magpakita sa'yo ng kabaitan. Because in a covenant, you need to be what? You are obligated to show loyalty. Nakuha niyo po? Kahit hindi siya faithful, you still remain what? Faithful. So 
So believing loyalty in our part reflects God's He said. Okay? So pag tayo ay nagpakita ng ating loyalty sa Diyos at sa kapwa-tao, nag-reflect ito ng loyalty ng Diyos sa atin. The term usually translated is steadfast love or loving loyalty in English Bibles. And believing loyalty is our act of He said toward God toward God and toward the gospel of Christ. We believe the gospel of Christ. And we are loyal to that gospel. Okay? Number two, believing loyalty is God He said is rooted in love. It's not a human merit or performance. Hindi ito galing sa atin. Okay? It is what? Rooted in the love of God that we have received. In other words, hindi ka magiging hesed. Hindi mo pwede i-express yung hesed na yan in your own. Hindi yan sa'yo galing. Galing din yan sa Diyos. Why? He loves all people. And he said, it's rooted in love, but it is not synonymous with love. But it is rooted in love and expressed in covenant. And remember, covenant have stipulations. Merong mga ano, conditions yung mga covenant na kuha ni Paul. In other words, God acts with love and loyalty towards you. Ganun ang Diyos. Yun yung ibig sabihin ng believing loyalty or ng word na He said. He acts with love and He is loyal towards you. Example. Tights and offering. Diba? If you had the revelations, that's part of the covenant. Kasi sabi ni Lord, the tithes are holy unto the Lord. Ibig sabihin, it belongs to Him. So, ibinibalik natin sa Kanya. And the expression, the act of giving it to God is what? We are becoming loyal to God. Actually, you're not giving it to the church or to the ministry or to the pastor. Actually, when you give your tithes, you're giving it to the King of Kings and to the Lord of Lords, to our High Priest who is the Lord Jesus Christ. And every time you do it, what are you doing? You are expressing your loyalty towards God. You are not thinking, Oy, paano yan? Kukunti lang ang pera ko. No. Because you have to remember, He is loyal to you. He is the stronger party in the covenant. At ang sabi niya, ako ang bahala sa iyo. Because you are the weaker party. I am the one that will provide for all your needs. Because I am the stronger one in the part, the stronger party in the covenant. And you are the weaker party in the covenant. You are the recipient of this covenant that I have made with you. But there are stipulations. One is what? Is the tithes and offering. Diba? Sabi niya, lahat ang kikitain mo, the 10% belongs to me. And then you respond to God. And that is what? Believing loyalty. You need to act with love and loyalty to God. Oh. Sa totoo lang, madaling magbigay ng 10,000, 20,000. Pero pag umabot ng million ang kinita mo, parang hirap na magbigay ng 100,000. Diba? And you start to question everything na yung pagbibigyan mo. <laughs> diba? You question na yung church na pagbibigyan mo parang hindi worthy. No. God has planted you in that local church. That's where you have to put your tights there. Diba? At hindi, no, hindi mo na obligasyon kung saan niya dadali yung tights na yon. Your responsibility is what? Mag-express ng loyalty sa Panginoon. And if you love God, you will believe what He say. Di ba? And how can you love God if you reject what He say? 
So if you turn toward to some other God or some other system, you are not expressing what we call believing loyalty. Remember in Exodus 15, 13, this is the song of Moses after they go through the Red Sea. Moses' song is about God's deliverance. Anong sinabi niya? You have led in your steadfast love. The word steadfast love there is what? He said, the people whom you have redeemed, you have guided them by your strength to your holy abode. So the act of redemption is linked to his head because these are God's people by covenant with Abraham. So the word he said has something to do with what? Redemption. Oh, Deuteronomy 7, 6 to 9. For you are a people holy to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for his treasured possession out of all the peoples who are on the face of the earth. It was not because you were more in number than any other people that the Lord set his love on you. The word set his love on you is what he said. For you were the fewest of all people. That the Lord has brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of slavery, from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know therefore that the Lord your God is God. So this is what you need to believe. That the Lord your God is God. The faithful God who keeps covenant and is steadfast love. He said, with those who love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. So God is loyal to his promises. And what he expects for you is to be loyal to him. And God is obligated to redeem you. Kaya pagdating sa New Testament, dumating si Kristo. Why? Because he is loyal to his promise. He is loyal to his plan A. There is no other plan. There is no plan B, C, or D. There is only one plan. You cannot love God if you do not believe He is who He is. Deuteronomy 7.9, Know therefore that the Lord your God is God. God says, I'm going to show you the same. He said, I'm going to be loyal to you. But I want from you is your loyalty. No other gods before me. I'm going to show my, he said, my loyalty to you. But I want you to be loyal to me. No other gods before me. God is being loyal to his covenant. Yan ang pagkatandaan natin. God is loyal to His covenant. He's going to fulfill. Kaya sabi niya sa Philippians, di ba, chapter 2, hindi pa siya natatapos. He's not yet finished with us. And He's going to fulfill everything that He has promised to us to completion. He is showing His head and He redeems Israel. So that redemption is what? A showing of his said or his loyalty to his promise to the nation of Israel. Second Samuel 7, 12 to 17, God is talking to David here through Nathan the prophet. And he says, when your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your fathers, I will raise up your offspring after you who shall come from your body and I will establish his kingdom, referring to his son, Solomon. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. And through the tribe of David, lumabasi si Cristo, di ba? Will be to him a father, and he shall be to me as a son. When he commits iniquity, I will discipline him with the rod of men, with the stripe of the sons of men. But my steadfast love, he said, will not depart from him. 
as I as I took it from Saul, whom I put away from before you. So God is telling David through Nathan, I'm not going to remove the calling. Yeah, I'm not going to forget the covenant once you're gone. I will raise up your son. Your son is going to inherit it, the throne. That's the promise of God. And mapansin nyo, he compares Saul to Solomon. Why? What's the difference? Solomon is not perfect. And Saul, the difference to Saul is what? He is not loyal to God. Diba? He disobeyed God. Doon sa mga instruction niya, diba yung sabi niya wag yung uh, yung kay Akan, diba? Yung mga hayop at yung hari hindi niya pinapatay. Ang, ang instruction sa kanya, Lord, patayin lahat. Walang iuwi. Pero ano, sa nang hinayang siya. Who he did not follow God. He is not loyal to what God has says. Now, Solomon. Solomon, tingnan niyo po sa Ecclesiastes. Even though nag-worship nag sa ibang idol, but at the end of his life, he repented. Nakuha niyo po. So, he remains, at the end of his life, he remained loyal to God. So, remember Solomon is not a perfect guy. Ezra 9.9 9, For we are slaves, yet our God has not forsaken us in our slavery, but has extended us his steadfast love before the king of Persia to grant us some reviving to set up the house of our God, to repair its ruin and to give us protection in Judea and Jerusalem. So he is the one extending love to us through his covenant. He said, he has said, because we believe that he can do what he say, he's going to do, and we're going to obey, and we're going to trust him. Yun ang ibig sabihin ng isel. Okay? Even yung, di ba? Israelites, they were in Babylon, and they thought nakalimutan na sila ni Lord. Sabi nila, no, I extended your my steadfast love to you. I have not forsaken you. Hosea 6.4 what shall, what shall I do with you, O Ephraim? In reference to the Northern Kingdom. Northern Kingdom. What shall I do with you, O Judah? Referring to the Southern Kingdom. Your love is like a morning cloud. Like the dew that goes early away. Therefore, I have yawned them by the prophets. I have slain them by the words of my mouth. Your people are under judgment, and my judgment goes forth as a light. For I desire steadfast love, not sacrifice. That is what God does desire from people. He desire, he said. I desire steadfast love, not sacrifice, the knowledge of God rather than burn offerings. So, he wants a knowledge of God rather than burnt offering. And knowledge of God it only comes when we encounter God. Let's go back to Deuteronomy, 20, Deuteronomy 7 verse 9. Know therefore that the Lord your God is God. So he is asking what? In knowledge of God. Knowledge is what? It's not a, a head knowledge, but an experiential knowledge of God. Maranasan mo how faithful or how loyal He is sa kanyang promise sa iyo. This is what you need to believe. You know Shema? This is the Jewish prayer that you can find in... Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6, 4 to 5. At ito madalas na pinipray ng mga Jews. Hero Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall, the lo you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. So yan po ang 
sinasabi ng Panginoon, believing loyalty. You have to believe this and be loyal to it. You can offer all the burnt offerings and sacrifices you want. If you don't have this believing loyalty, you have nothing. It's just a work, a human effort. God says, I desire steadfast love or hesed, hesed. He said, I mean, and not sacrifice. Micah 6 8, this is very famous, diba? He has told you, O oh man, what God, what is good, and what the Lord require of you, but to do justice, to love kindness, or word, he said, and to walk humbly with your God. He is requiring us to be loyal to him. Hosea 6, 5 to 6, therefore I have yawned them by the prophets. I have slain them by the words of my mouth. And my judgments goes forth as a light, as the light. For I desire a steadfast love and not sacrifice. The knowledge of God rather than burn offering. Kaya diba sa Ephesians chapter 3, sabi niya, to know Christ. To know Christ. The word new there is what? Sa English translation is what? It means sexual intercourse. Galing yan doon sa Hebrew word sa Genesis chapter 4. Adam knew his wife and he begot and she begot a son. That's intimacy. Knowing God by experience. Nakuha niyo po? It's not an intellectual knowledge of who God is. It's not a doctrine. It's not a theology, but an experience of God. Again, covenant obedience does not equal to works or dead works. Remember, the offering of Isaac by Abraham it was that Abraham who initiated, who initiated the offering of Isaac. It was not. It was God who asked Abraham, offer to me your son. Kaya yun yung basis ng sinabi ni James. Chapter 4, di ba sabi ron, faith without work is dead. At ang ginamit niyang example is Abraham offering Isaac. Ibig sabihin, we don't do it in our own. We just don't volunteer it na i-offer ko yung anak o whatsoever na meron ka. But it was God. Kaya nga importante yung covenant. Yung covenant, hindi ikaw, kung makipag-covenant ka kay Lord for something, you have a business or whatsoever that you are asking and you made a covenant with God, hindi ikaw ang magde-decide yung covenant. Siya ang magde-decide kung ano yung i-covenant mo sa Panginoon. This is, this is what Hosea chapter 6 rejects. I am not after works. I am not after going through the motions of your sacrifices and obeying this or that command. It's not about that obeying that command. It's about you obey what God is saying to you. That's why in the New Testament, there is a law, the law of spirit and life. We are under that law. We are not under the law of sin and death. But we are under the law of spirit and life. It is what the spirit is telling you. Nakuha niyo po? That's why sabi ng Bible, walk in the spirit. Because it's not a guarantee that when you obey what is in the Bible, it's not a guarantee that you are walking in the spirit. But when you are walking in the spirit, you will always, you will have always a guarantee that you're going to obey what the Bible says. What God wants is loyalty. Believing loyalty. You need to recognize God. Believe that He is the true God. The God of all gods. 
Tingnan niyo po. Ano na yung mga problema ang nadaanan niyo sa buhay niyo na hindi kayang solusyonan ng Diyos? Sige nga, isipin natin. But most of us fail to express loyalty to God. O, di ba, karamihan, pag may problema sa pera, saan pumupunta? Ay doon sa 5-6. Rather than believing God that God is going to provide him because he has, he has a covenant with God and God will provide. Nakuha niyo po. This is what you need to believe and then be loyal to Him as He is loyal to you. You need to believe His word, all His promises, every stipulation to sa covenant na ginawa niya sa iyo, you need to be loyal to it. Why? He is loyal. So covenant obedience is not about works. I will do this, I will do that. Di ba? It's not about works. It's not about works without belief. It is not ritual acts. Di ba sa Old Testament may mga ritual? May sa New Testament, marami din may mga ritual na ginagawa. Di ba? But without believing or faith, it's all useless. Because covenant obedience is believing loyalty to the covenant. God made a promise and He is loyal to fulfill it and He is waiting from us to be loyal to Him. An exclusive belief in and loyalty to the true God whose love launched the covenant in the first place. Kaya yung ating belief is very exclusive to Him alone lang, wala nang iba. Not even to our own human determinations. We don't even trust our own strength. We don't trust it. Because our strength fails, mga kapatid. Magpifail yan. Psalm 59. Let's look some of the scripture and binabanggit itong steadfast love. But I will sing of your strength. I will sing aloud of your steadfast love in the morning, for you have been to me a fortress and refuge in the day of my distress. Next, Psalm 90 verse 14. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, and that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. He said, or believing loyalty, or loving loyalty. Psalm 92 verse 2, to declare your steadfast love, or he said in the morning, in your faithfulness by night. Psalm 143 verse 8, let me hear the morning, in the morning of your steadfast love. For you, for in you I trust. Make me known the way I should go, for to you I lift up my soul. Lamentation 3, 22 to 23. The steadfast love of the Lord, he said, never ceases. His mercy never comes to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Conclusion. So the theological way of he said in the Old Testament is really useful, is a really useful way to understand believing loyalty. This is the salvation relationship in both Testament. It is rooted into the way God wants to relate to his people. His loyalty to his original plan and what he really desires from us as believers. So in expect tayo na maging loyal sa kanya. Believing loyalty. It seems believing loyalty has always been what God was after. He is after believing loyalty. Tandaan niyo po. He never wanted moral perfections or self-righteousness because we cannot be perfect. Ang perfection lang maatay mo doon sa langit. But while we are here on earth, we will never attain moral perfections. We will fail. Diba? 
he wanted his people to trust him and him alone for their earthly and everlasting salvation. Lahat na kailangan mo dito sa lupa. Lahat na klaseng ligtasan na kailangan mo. Kaligtasan sa sakit, kahirapan, lahat. He wants you to trust him. He wants you to be loyal to him. So it's never been about work system or just a physical Israel. It's not just about a physical Israel or to us in the New Testament, it's not just work na ma-please mo lang ang Diyos o magawa ka nito, gawa ka niyan. Doing this and doing that. Doing what is good and refraining what is evil. That's not it's all about. It's always about the heart. And a very useful way for understanding the concept of said is when you operate in the law of spirit and life. The audible is always the heart. Mga kapatid, I hope naliwanagan po tayo. He wants believing loyalty. He wants us to believe in Him. He wants us to be loyal to His promise. He wants us to be believing that whatever He promised is going to fulfill it. Sabi ni Lord, I'm watching my word to fulfill it. Amen. Father, today we are thanking you because you are a good God. And whatever promise that you have promised to us, you are going to fulfill because you are loyal to us. You are loyal to your plan. And you're expecting us to have this kind of reactions to you. He said, Father, forgive us for not knowing you as God. Lord, continue to bring us into a revelation and understanding for who you are, Father. We thank you and we bless you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let us now have our communion. Sabi ng Panginoon, those who have communal element in your houses, just leave it up before the Lord. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, we receive it. We thank you. And this is part of your plan. And you are loyal to that plan. We thank you for this body that was shared on the cross of God. Let us now partake the bread. In the same way, he also took the cup after the supper saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. We thank you, Father, for the blood of Jesus. Even right now, I just release and pray healing for each one, especially itong nasa Zoom, kung meron may sakit, ano man pong nagdaman, ay aming pong itinataas sa inyo. We thank you because that's part of the covenant, the stipulations in the covenant that you're going to heal us, Father. That's part of the promise. We receive it today 
and we release that healing in Jesus name amen let's now partake the juice